All right. Well, welcome to 2024. Yeah. Are you more excited that 2024 is here or that 2023 is gone? I know. I know. <laughs> it's one of those things you're like, well, there's always hope. Amen. Hey, I was super excited for 2024. Uh, amen. Listen, I, I, I've got a, a, a message. I, I, I was trying to think of several different ways to package it and present it. But, you know, the, the new year is great. It's not like really, you know, there's a huge difference between December 31st and January 1st. I mean, and, and honestly, this has kind of been like one of the weirdest little uh, Christmas breaks for us because uh, our kids still aren't back in school yet. In fact, we were ready to send them back tomorrow, but one of the kids' friends told us, no, they don't go back till Tuesday. We're like, Tuesday? I want some tax money back. I mean, Tuesday. I pay them good money to take them kids. Man, can't believe this. Yeah, our kids are lucky because they would have been, I, we would have dropped them off at school. Call us later. <laughs> yeah. So it's been kind of different. You know, I, I feel, I really do. I feel like, like, uh, you know, and I thought, well, we got to leave the decorations up because you always got to have a day in January where it's like, well, it's kind of still Christmas. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hey, but you know, I, I, I and I, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it, and I'm, and I'm kind of thinking through the message, but I'm praying about it, and really, with the new year, you really do reset yourself. You, you put yourself in a mental perspective that hey, I can change. I'd like to change. I'd like to do this. I'd like to not do that. You know, I'd like to see this more in my life. Uh, as Christians, we usually say, I would like to do this more or that more. I'd like to pray more. I'd really like to get more closer to God. And, and as I was praying, you know, Lord, just give me vision and, and word for this next year. The Lord did. He said 2024 is the year for more. Amen. And I was like, amen, Lord, that's, that's great. And, and really, you can get, and, 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 and this is what I want to present to you today, that, that this year is your year for more. But you get to decide what more you're going to have. More of the same? More of the Lord? More prayer? I, I, I said this to Jenny. She goes, well, I want less clutter. No, no, no. I said, no, no, no. You want more room. <laughs> well, uh, I, want, I want less bills. No, you might just need more finances. <laughs> I, I want more building space. <laughs> Stick them on the roof. I want, I want more power in my life, more of God's power. I want to see more answers to prayer. I just want you to, to just kind of think for a minute. What do you want more of in your life this year? What do you want more of? Think about it. Go a little wild. I want more success. I want more freedom. I want more uh, distance between me and them. Huh? I want more family connection. What do you want more? I want to be in church more. Oh, good. I got a couple of those. I ain't the one that won't throw in the shameless plug. No, I will throw those in. More prayer. Man, I want to be, I want to have more God. I want to be more closer. 
I want to feel his presence more. Huh? You know, whenever, whenever we go to approach something, I don't know, anybody, do you write, write down some goals? Write things down? A couple of you, yeah. All right. We got two or three successful people. Sorry, did I start that too quick? All right, let's just talk about more again. I want to write things down more. You know, there's a reason why the Bible is written down. Why didn't God just say it to us? Because we forget. Amen. Writing things down will bring agreement. You know what writing things down will bring? Clarification. Well, I just got these ideas. Write it down. I don't know. That's for somebody. But you need to start writing it down. So we, we approach these things. Uh, we, we write them down. I, I love to write down goals. I, lo I love going back over them. I, I go over my notes from, I was going over some of my notes. In fact, I just found a, a disc of when I was a youth pastor, so I'm going to try to clean that up and find a CD player. <laughs> I know that's how old that is. Find somebody with a car with a CD player. I know my daughter, she, she was trying to describe a CD. She was like, well, it's like a record, but smaller and shiny. How do you know what a record is and not a CD? But we write these, these things down, we, 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 we get these goals, and, and, and really I am a huge proponent of making a resolution, make a determination to work positive change in your life. That can only produce good. What if I don't get it? If you shoot for the moon, you might hit a star if you miss. Huh? It's still good. Amen. But we, we make a determination to go for some positive change in our life. More God, more prayer, more room in my house. And we look for ways to implement those changes. I, I want to eat more vegetables. I'm going to lose more weight. I want to exercise more. I want more jeans, more belt. Huh? We can do a lot with that. And inevitably, if you haven't noticed by now, there are things that will throw you off. You have this determination to make this positive change, and something happens. And, and I just want to read something to you because it's actually addressed in the Bible. And in fact, you probably have heard me preach on this before, unless this is your first time. Right? That makes sense. And so in Isaiah, Isaiah was a young prophet. Young prophets are great. Why? I don't know. They just don't know when to be quiet. And so they're just going to say it anyways, and uh, we probably need it. Hey, Amen. And Isaiah, he, this young prophet, he has this vision. And, and I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it right in the New Living Translation. It's going to sound kind of funky, and I'll explain that. But Isaiah gets up there, and you, you might have heard this quoted before if, if you've been in church for any length of time or been around church, and, and, he, and he sees God, and it's just this powerful experience, and God says, we have a message for people, and this is in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, if you want to go over there, and he says, 
who will go for us to give this message to people? And God's in heaven and he's looking for human volunteers. And he's looking at angels, you know, and everybody in heaven. And there's only one guy. And he goes, who will go for us? And Isaiah is like, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> he's young, right? And he says, all right. And start it, pick it up in verse uh, 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 right, right at the end of verse 8, he says, Here, I said, Here I am, send me. Like willing people, amen. And he said, Yeah, go and say to this people, Listen carefully, but do not understand. Watch closely, but learn nothing. Harden the hearts of these people. Plug their ears and shut their eyes. That way they will not see with their eyes, nor hear with their ears nor understand with their hearts and turn to me for healing. And I'm like, well, that's kind of the opposite of what I thought God would do. And then I said, Lord, how long will this go on? And he replied, until their towns are empty, their houses are deserted, the whole country is a wasteland. Ooh, that's rough. And, and I just, so here we have Hebrew that got translated into Latin, that gets translated into English, that gets then somewhat updated to our vernacular. And it sounds really weird. Let me, let me read it to you because it, it goes much better when you go from English to Greek, or I'm sorry, from Hebrew to Greek to English. Listen to this. He said, and go say to this people, when you hear what I say, you won't understand. When you see what I do, you won't comprehend it. Well, why, Lord? I want to see. I want to hear. I want to understand. Why? Listen. For their heart, for the hearts of these people are hardened. Their ears cannot hear. And they have closed their eyes so they cannot see. Their ears cannot hear, then their hearts cannot understand, and they can't turn to me so I can heal them. And God's saying, Isaiah, can you go tell these people, listen, your hearts are hardened. You're not open or receptive to listening to anything. You won't take advice. You already know what to do. You already have a good idea of how to do it. You're going to do your thing your way. Don't tell me what to do. I already know what to do. And you're like, but you don't have the track record. He says, when, when your heart gets to that place, he says, it's like having your eyes closed and trying to see what's going on. Or you're hearing the words, you haven't listened to one of them. And so there's no way you're going to understand with your heart. Because once you start understanding with your heart, You'll turn to God, and he will heal you. And he's, it's almost like a warning. Wake up. Start listening. Start looking at what I'm doing for you. Recognize the things I am sending to you. Because I want to heal you. And it's a powerful moment. It's a powerful time. And Jesus explained, get this, Jesus explained how to fix this issue. Isn't that crazy? Jesus literally went through and showed people in his own Jesus way how to get over the fact that you're not getting the results you want, that you're not being fruitful, that you're not hitting your goal. That you're not 
seeing the change you want, that you're not able to actually get healed. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Bounce over there right quick. Matthew chapter 13. You surprised? It's a parable of the sower. It's a parable of the sower. You know, Jesus goes through, and, and I, don't, I don't know if you remember this. I'll, I'll, I'll recollect it for you real quick. Jesus sits everybody down, and he preaches a little sermon, and he says, listen, listen. There's this farmer, and he goes out, and he scatters seed around. Let me tell you what the kingdom of heaven's like. It's like a farmer, and he goes out, and he throws seed around. And some of it falls on a, a, a footpath, a walkway. And so the birds grab that seed up. It never gets planted. And, and, then, and then there's some seed that, that falls into some shallow soil. And since the soil is shallow, it doesn't have to go down very far. And so it springs up really fast. And then the sun comes out. And it's Arizona. <laughs> and now it's a little cooked plant. And it shrivels up and dies. As fast as it went up, it went right back down. I can do it. No, I can't. And then the other seed, it got into some good soil. And it gets down in there. And it starts to grow up. But it's full of weeds. Not a good gardener. And those weeds, the Bible says, literally choke out that plant it smothers it suffocates the plant it doesn't bear any fruit either but then some seed makes it into the dirt goes down deep no weeds or the weeds get plucked it grows up and bears fruit and gets some of the seed 30 times what was planted you planted one apple you got 30 apple trees Some of them, 60 times. Literally, I planted one apple seed. I got 60 apple trees. Some of it, 100 times. Shoot, I'll take the 30. Man, that's a lot of, that's a lot, that just sounds like a lot of work, 30 apple trees. <laughs> Sent my kids to just prune the neighbor's lemon tree, pick them lemons. I was like, did you even do anything? There's tons of lemons out there. Well, what is this? And Jesus walks away. He's like, sermon's over. And everybody's like, oh, okay. And the disciples are like, wait a minute. I don't understand. Could you explain that to me, please? He's like, sure. Because to you is given these answers. But, and then he quotes Isaiah. Verse 11, he replies, you're permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. Well, that seems kind of rude. But listen, listen to what he says. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little they understand gets taken away from them. Dang. And that's why I use par parables. Are you trying to make it hard? Uh-uh. He's literally, he put away the whiteboard and pens, took out a big sheet of paper, and started writing with crayons. That's what parables means. I'm going to break this down super easy. He went out to a bunch of gardeners and farmers, and he said, this is what it's like. You plant the seed. They're like, oh, yeah, we know how to do that. I mean, we don't do that here. I don't do that here. I didn't even plant seeds in Seattle. I'm not even going to attempt to do that in Arizona. <laughs> but he's talking to all these people who know how to farm. 
When he talked to fishermen, he, he explained the kingdom of God in terms of fishing. He breaks it down and makes it super easy. Why? Because they're so dull. They're not getting it. So he's like, I'm, let me break it down for you here. He says, that's why I use parables. Because they look and they don't really see. They hear and they don't really listen or understand. And it fulfills that prophecy of Isaiah. For the heart, verse 15, Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. For the hearts of these people are hardened. Their ears cannot hear. And their eyes, and they have closed their eyes, so they can't see. Their ears cannot hear. And their hearts cannot understand. So they cannot turn to me, and I cannot heal them. And that's all God wants to do. He sent his son so we could be healed. It's his goal. It's his endeavor. Everything he does and moves is towards your healing, your connection with him. He'll take out anything that would stand in the way of your relationship with him. Unfortunately, he needs your permission, though. Verse 16, but blessed are your eyes because you have gone to inspire and your ears because you're sitting in that chair. <laughs> Some of the people standing up are like, oh, dang. I'm just kidding. You too. Now, here is the secret. Jesus is literally going to teach them how to be fruitful, how to get the end result of what you're trying to do. If you want to plant a seed and get the result back, listen to how it works, okay? Here you go. Now, listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting the seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes away and snatches, the evil come, one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. I know it's like early in the morning on that camera. <laughs> there we go. They don't understand it. And it's like, well, you know, that, 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 that's kind of tough, Pastor, because sometimes I don't understand what you're saying. In fact, about 80%. <laughs> you know what? The disciples didn't understand either. They had no clue what Jesus was talking about. But there's a difference. And that's why Jesus called them blessed. There's a, they weren't blessed because their name was Matthew, Peter, James, John. That's not why they were blessed. You know why they were blessed? Because they came back and asked questions. They didn't go, I don't understand. Gosh, another sermon. I'm just going to do YouTube from now on. I don't even understand him on YouTube. I'm going to play video games. I understand those. I mean, I watch movies I don't understand. I, I, I don't think Jenny likes watching movies with me. I'm like, wait, what, who's that? What's going on? It just started. All right, but I don't understand. <laughs> but the difference was the disciples came back and asked questions. They didn't give up. Huh? I think I remember that one scripture. Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. But we stand around, quiet with our hands in our pocket, going, nothing ever good comes my way. <laughs> nothing good happens to me. The devil's after me. 
I'm going to just watch Netflix for two hours or eight hours. Come on. And the Bible gave you the answer. Ask. Seek. Not, don't sit on your hands. Use them to flip the Bible. Use them to knock on doors. Go find your answer. But I want God to deliver it. With a bow, if possible. <laughs> I mean, if he did that, you'd probably say, well, it doesn't have my name on it. How do I know it's for me? Right? You know what they say an excuse is? It's the skin of a reason stuffed with a lie. Say that one again. Some of you heard that for the first time. I tell that to my leadership team all the time. An excuse is the skin of a reason stuffed with a lie. That's going to suck the next time you give that excuse, trust me. And when he cuts deep. Number one, how to reach your goals in 2024. Number one, to reach your goals and see your dreams come true. Number one, you've got to understand. It's right, that, that was the first spot, right? Why doesn't some seed ever come to fruition? It never even makes it in the ground. Some of you don't have any clarity on what you want. I just want things to be better. Yeah. It's a good start. Super good start. Now what? Start writing it down. Clarify it. What do you want to get better? When you know what you want to get better, you'll start to see the changes that need to be made. You know, it's funny. We either, I heard this earlier, I loved it. We either make ourselves in every story either the victim or the hero. One of the, uh, we're, we're either the victim or the hero. I did this, they did this to me. I survived, I did this, I did this. Or they keep getting me, it's them, them, them. We're never the perpetrator. Never the perpetrator. We're just the victim or the hero. Come on. Make a bunch of straw men. Understand. To reach your goals, your dreams, you must understand. How do you get understanding? Ask questions. Seek the answer. Knock on all doors. Well, I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be this door. If it's not answered, keep knocking. Some of y'all, we knocked on your door. I'm glad we didn't stop after the first one. We should probably go knock on more doors, huh? Knock on them all. You're not a fortune teller. You don't know which one might get open, might not. Get it out there. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Come on. You can have faith and knock on all doors. The Bible says so. Amen. 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 Okay. All right, pastor, I get it. All right. Verse 20. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. That was the best sermon ever, Pastor. How was church? It was awesome. What'd they talk about? It was so good, though. I just feel good. It's either that or something way crazy. Something about Nephilim. The sea... <laughs> Sorry. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, what happens? They don't 
last long. Some of y'all need to listen to this one. You, 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 you wanted to make a great change, but is this one going to last? Have you tried to make a change and it didn't last? This is what happened. Because if you started to understand, this next one comes into play. Listen, listen, listen. Every single time, without fail, this happens. Anytime you want to do something and make a positive change, this will happen. I can't stress this enough. This one's important. The seed that fell, the, uh, the, the seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. Yes, I'm writing it down. I'm going to make these great chants. I'm going to have more prayer. I'm going to see more healing in my life. I'm going to see my children worship God more. And I'm, I know it's going to happen. Okay, okay, that's good. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or any kind of persecution for believing God's word. You will. You will. The sun's going to come out. It does especially in Arizona. <laughs> Even today, it's going to be freezing cold unless you step in the sun, and then you're going to be sweating. Then you step in the shade, and you're going to be freezing. Then you step in the sun, you're going to be sweating. It's ridiculous. I'd just rather sweat. Amen. 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 <laughs> you know, this is... The one that gets it a bunch, gets a lot of us, gets, gets us on certain things, is that we, we, we make a great attempt. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, how, how you're, you, how's 2024 going to be different? How are we going to leave 2023 where it needs to stay? We're going to have to survive the dry season. We're going to have to push through the difficult time, the difficult season. I'm telling you, the sun's going to come up, shine on that seed, do what it's supposed to do. And if it's not deep, you'll know it because you'll fall away from it. It'll be like my planners. January's all filled out. I picked it back up in August, went, ooh. <laughs> terrible with planners. I love them. I hardly buy them anymore because I know I'm going to fill out January. And I'm going to pick it back up in August. That seed never <laughs> makes it to fruition. <laughs> Listen, number two, number two, don't give up. Press through the difficult season. In every endeavor you're going to do, there is going to be a, a season of difficulty. It will not be easy. And you have to make the determination that when I hit that season, when I'm out of church and I'm all done having people yell and play, that I am still going to do it I am still going to make those changes. I am still going to step forward and have more in 2024. Amen. Rain or shine, I'm going to get some grit, and I'm going to, if I have to stomp and trudge, it's going to go forward. Huh? Amen? Amen. Are you going to do it? Yeah. Or sing and shout it and still do without it? Number three, last but not least, there's one more thing blocking you. 
Okay? So, so, so you understand. You got some clarification. You're asking questions. You're seeking the Lord. You're fasting. Ooh. <laughs> what, pastor? You're fasting because you're seeking for clarification. What's fasting? Fasting means you sacrifice something you like to make room for God. Food, Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> YouTube, video games, lunch, dinner. <laughs> the power of fasting. And you've fasted and prayed. And you've got this, you've got a couple of things. God gave you these three things, and you're just charging out there. And all of a sudden, it got hard, and you're like, I am still going forward. Fine. You know what happens next? Verse 22. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of life and the lure of wealth. So no fruit is produced. If the birds didn't get it and the sun didn't get it, the weeds are coming for it. Because, come on, at some point in your life, you're going to get distracted. You're going to get disrupted distraction is when you turn your attention away disruption is when something else turns your attention away and they both come and the goal is so that you aren't fruitful the goal of the distraction and the disruption is so that fruit doesn't get into production that's not you huh uh uh-uh. uh. I mean, the distractions, come on. That's just everyday life. They, the Bible says it's the cares of life. I'm like, yeah, well, I don't have any anxiety. No, 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 no. Dig a little deeper. The cares of life, like waking up and feeding the kids. Well, I got to do that. I know. Walking the dog. Well, I don't know if I want to walk him anymore. I don't. Come on. The, the clean the house. Are you telling me not to clean? No, not at all. Can't say that. (laughs) What do you mean then? You have to make sure a priority stays a priority and make sure that if you need, what you cut out are the things that, that don't pertain, that don't move you forward to your God given goal i guarantee if we do a budget of your time for the last 15 years of this church i've been a full-time worker for 13 of them and i also had two kids along the way with two kids already started Let me break it down. I got four kids and two or three jobs, depending upon what day of the year it is. And I still have to pray for myself, let alone for the church and and my fellow members. You can do it. Am I perfect? No. But what do I do? I make sure I wake up. Yeah, I make sure, uh, it's like, you know what? I actually don't have time to watch this show. Why? I want to read the Bible. Why? Because I need it personally. Not just I want to be prepared for you, because I do that too, but I need it for me. And so we have, to, we have to take 
whatever doesn't meet our God-given goals and cut it out. I mean, I might send you 20 reels, but then like three days later, you, it might just go dry, and I'm sorry about that. I'll get back to the reels in a bit. You know I'm on Facebook because you'll receive 10 reels. <laughs> or Instagram. Wait, that's Instagram, right? Sorry. They're almost the same now. Just, anyways. The seed that fell among thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of life and the lure of wealth so no fruit is produced. Number three. Don't. All right, number three. Stay the course. Avoid distractions, because that's your part, and bounce back from disruptions. You, I, you're going to get disrupted. I guarantee it. January 1st, 2024, and I'm like, this is the year for more. And I, feel, I feel really good about this year. January 2nd, I had a fever, and I was on the couch. <laughs> Dad, can we play? Uh, I need the, no soup. <laughs> I don't think I got out of bed till Thursday. Yeah. So what I got, what, what I do Thursday night? Pray. Sunday cometh. The calendar don't care how I feel. Trash man, he don't care. He's, he has no mercy. He's like, I'm rolling by your place, 5.30 a.m., 45 miles an hour. You better have that can out there. I'm running down in my bathrobe. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I don't understand how they get them trucks that fast. And it's uphill to my house. I mean, slightly, but he's like, if it's that can's not out there, I'm blown by his place. You ever take your can over to uh, neighbors. your neighbors? That's <laughs> rarely there. I might have done that. Or check to see if how full theirs was. Ooh. Got a little bit of room. Mind if I? The blue lid is for recyclables, people. Not if your black lid gets too full. Yeah, some of you do that, don't you? I'm always afraid they're going to look in it and be like, those aren't recyclables. It's like my family, they, it's, it's them. <laughs> you got to avoid the distractions and bounce back from the disruption. It, you might get disrupted, yeah. Bounce back, get back on course. What happens when you trip? You get up. Dust yourself off and get right on a going. Don't get under condemnation. Oh, I just ruined everything. Well, not everything, because you still got today. Not everything. Why? You got tomorrow. Make it different. Amen? Yes. Amen. Say, make, make. Tomorrow, tomorrow different. different. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for lifting up our hearts, inspiring us that we can see more in 2024, that we can see the things we've longed for come to pass even more. You said you're the God of more. You'll do exceedingly abundantly more. And I just thank you, Father, that as we approach this next year, that as we pray out your plans and purposes, that, Lord God, you'll not only Strengthen our hearts and plant that seed in us. But you'll continually encourage us to keep going, to seek understanding, to knock on all those doors, to not give up, and to bounce back. Father, we do all of this in your strength, because of your grace, we give you glory. Glorify your Son in our lives. 
Make us fruitful. I thank you, Lord, that we can approach this year for more, more of you. And we pray for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And we're going to have some prayer.